To introduce Emmanuel Moreau, whose work is all about defining space through color, there was a brilliant solution who would be the perfect person to introduce Emmanuel Art Lubitz, who we all know and love, is a professor in the School of Architecture and a local architect who deploys color in his own personal work and who also has a really special connection to the festival. He was partners with Jill Watson for a number of years before her untimely death. And it's really an honor. And if you could help me in welcoming Art Lubitz to introduce Emmanuel this evening. It's uh, really a pleasure for me to uh, do this tonight <clears throat> because uh, Jill Watson was not only my partner, but she was an incredible uh, creative architect and artist. Uh, and before I <clears throat> get into the introduction, I'd like to interrupt, in, interrupt the introduction with uh, an announcement. Um, over the spring break, <clears throat> one of our faculty members uh, made a s offhand comment um, in the planning commission, which she is head of. And that comment was, mm, it looks like it could be a suburban office building somewhere. <clears throat> that comment, I believe, is going to ha have profound effects on the awareness of architecture when um, money is being allocated by the city government or tax credits, or zoning uh, issues. So as, I don't know whether that was a heroic act, but she's my hero. So I'd like to ask for a round of applause for her. <laughs> now, <clears throat> obviously, uh, I think it's probably clear that uh, our speaker's main subject is going to be color. And color has uh, had a strange history. Aristotle thought color was a drug. Derrida thought color was a poison. And there are still uh, many architects that might not believe that, but think that color is dangerous and risky. Um, now, the um, color creates uh, extra meaning, which continues long after the viewer gets the idea. Um, our speaker uses color to divide define and delimit space. She uh, uses color in a way and her to have people not only see the color, but she wants them to touch the colors and she wants them to feel the colors. And the result of her use of colors is that she creates an atmosphere which elicits an emotion. So please help me in, uh, welcome Emmanuel Moreau. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you very much for coming to the lecture today. I'm very happy you are here. Uh, my name is Emmanuel Moreau, a French architect living in Tokyo. And I'm here today to share with you my experience and my thoughts as an architect who fell in love with colors. Before going into my slides, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to uh, Spike Wolf and to Kevin, he uh, Kevin Hines because f for the framework, because my installation uh, became possible 
with a frame, <laughs> with no frame, it was possible, thank you very much. And uh, to all the students who participate and uh, installate the paper, and uh, I cannot remember the name of everybody, but a lot of person helped me to make possible uh, the 100 Colors exhibition. Thank you very much. And of course, many thanks to the Carnegie Mellon University for inviting me for this lecture series. I'm very, very happy to be here. Thank you very much. <clears throat> and to, make, to give me the opportunity to make the first 100 Colors exhibition outside Japan. I'm very, very happy. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> the slide you show is, uh, usually is, is a graphic of my business card. Uh, in Japan, everybody has to use business cards. When you meet someone, you have to exchange your card. So if you go to Japan one day, don't forget to make one. I think it's very, very important. And it expresses all my concepts. Uh, I've been living now in Tokyo for 19 years, quite a long time. Um, <clears throat> I discovered Japan with books when I was in high school. I read a lot of Japanese literature. At this moment, of course, there was no internet, and it was very, very difficult to get information about the contemporary Japan and the contemporary Tokyo. So I was a student in architecture, and I decided for my diploma to uh, choose a subject about Tokyo, and it was it gave me the opportunity to go to Tokyo one week, and this one week trip was a changed my life. It was a turning point uh, with my life. <clears throat> I remember it was almost twenty years ago, but I re I remember it as if it was yesterday <clears throat> when I get off the train from the airport and when I saw the cityscape of Tokyo for the first time, I was so impressed by all the colors in the cityscape. I, at this moment, I felt a lot of emotions. It was incredible for me. And the colors, there were like thousands of colors. They appear like um, floating, like in three dimensional dimension. Uh, in the space due to the structure of the city. <clears throat> of course, until I got to Japan, I was lived in France, and the, the structure of the city in France, I will show some slide after, is, is on the opposite of Japanese one. Uh, <clears throat> in Japan, uh, the, the city is composed of a lot of, I call them layers, a lot of different building with different volumes, uh, electric cables and signboards, a lot of elements overlap each other in the city, like layers, and it, cre it creates a feeling of depth. And when I arrived in Tokyo and saw this, uh, the city for the first time, uh, <coughs> there's the two points, the colors and layers, impressed me a lot, a lot. <clears throat> and uh, I think in the first two hours I was in Japan, I decided to live in Tokyo. <laughs> it was, <clears throat> I didn't say, but oh, when I was in France, I was a student in architecture, I was not conscious about colors. I didn't like specially colors. I didn't have any particular interest. It was like a, like a shock with, a, uh, with Tokyo, and I decided to live here. I, uh, it's uh, the roof of Paris, I know. So. And uh, I was living in France uh, so 25 years until I visit Tokyo for the first time. So, <clears throat> of course, in Paris, I grew up like in a stone built city. So the color of Paris is quite monotone, the color of the uh, stones. 
is in Japan. <coughs> there are roofs of Tokyo. <coughs> these photos are quite, uh, these photos are perhaps 20 years old. The colors are paled a little. <coughs> In Tokyo, when you are looking for <coughs> somewhere, there are always plenty of colors. <coughs> vending machines, so there are a lot, a lot of vending machines in the city. It's a <coughs> quite small machine, but they give colors to the city too. Uh, I'm back with Paris. Um, when when you walk, for example, in a, it's, a, it's a small street in Paris. It's like this. You have like continuous facade on your right side, on your left side, and <clears throat> naturally you look in f straight on you, and you have the sky perfectly above your head. It's a very perspective uh, structure. <clears throat> it's a small town in Tokyo. As I said, in Tokyo there are a lot of elements which overlap each other. And when I saw Tokyo for the first time, within the first two hours, the, this feeling of layers was uh, very... I was very impressed by this. Of course, these layers have colors. So. Uh, the colors, as I say, seems floating. <clears throat> and I went back to France and I got my architect, the French architect license. And two, two months after, I decided to move to Japan with one suitcase. <clears throat> and first, I have to start from zero. Uh, I had to learn Japanese language. And of course, the French, uh, architect license cannot be used in Japan, so I had to learn the Japanese regulatory rules and to take again the Japanese architect's license. <clears throat> and when I, I start living uh, in Tokyo, <clears throat> I realize, uh, of course, several things, but. One thing that surprised me was uh, it's read here, the Japanese traditional partitions. Uh, <clears throat> for me, I learned, when I was in France, I learned uh, Japanese through books. So I was very interested by the Japanese traditional partition, like paper, sliding paper screen. And <clears throat> it's an example of uh, <clears throat> the Villa Katsurali Kyo in Kyoto. <clears throat> and uh, traditionally, so like you have paper sliding screen, so the Japanese traditional screen were used to divide flexibly the space according to the season or to the function. So it divides space, but it's not divided totally because you can always feel who or what is on the other side of the screen, or you can feel the nature. But when I start living in Tokyo, I realized that uh, almost of these traditional screens were disappearing from Japan and replacing by contemporary architecture. And I got very, very sad because this screen, I, I love them, their uh, functionality, flex flexi flexibility, and their beauty. I was very, very sad. <clears throat> and I decided at that time to <clears throat> perhaps I thought if there, there is a way to create an, an, like a new uh, type of partitions but keeping their essence. And uh, <clears throat> one of the things I realized it was that the Japanese people and for example in Japanese uh, uh, buildings or Japanese interior design, product design, colors was not used at all. <laughs> For me, I, I moved to Japan because I felt so beautiful the colors of the city. But 
uh, usually Japanese designer and architect do not use colors at all. All the spaces, all the building are very like white or the wood color or the gray, the concrete color. I was very, very surprised uh, by that. And when I uh, got my architect license, Japanese one, I decided I uh, create my own studio. Uh, I decided at this moment to design with colors, <laughs> like Tokyo <laughs> layers and colors. Uh, gave me a lot of emotions, so I decided to design with colors in order people can feel emotions. <clears throat> and at this moment, I, I create the, the name and the concept of Shikiri, which is the title of the lecture today. Shikiri in Japanese uh, is a word which means partition. <clears throat> But I, I change, it's written with two Chinese characters. I change the first character by the character which means colors and which has the same pronunciation as the original one. So this word shikiri, uh, <coughs> when you see it, when the Japanese see it, uh, they can understand that it means dividing space with, col with colors. <coughs> I think, I don't know in the United States, but in France, in Japan, usually color is, in, especially in architecture, in interior design, color is considered as a minor element, usually as a two-dimensional element, chose as a, at the end of the design process, as a finishing touch. For example, we have, when we are finished to create some architecture space at the end, you will choose a, perhaps the color of the wall or the color of the flooring. It's like a finishing touch. And I was so impressed by the three-dimension feeling of the layers of color in the city of Tokyo. Uh, I chose to use color, not at three-dimensional elements, but at, not at two-dimensional elements but as three-dimensional elements like layers in order to create space. That's the concept of Shikiri. And <clears throat> I, I started my studio in 2003, so it's uh, more than 10 years ago. And all my works, uh, I base all my works on this concept. Of course, Shikiri, uh, changes and evolves all the time. <clears throat> I started as like uh, colors in the form of a surface, inspiring by the Japanese traditional partition. But the shikiri changed to line, for example. <clears throat> and <clears throat> I will show you some uh, project. I'm architect, but uh, the first project. Uh, Will be architecture, but I, I design a lot of things, not specially architecture. <clears throat> I, I would like to show the, this project. It's a project of a bank. It's a, it's a Shilis, it's not one. It's a, the Sugamo Shinking Bank in Tokyo. <clears throat> I designed four banks for the same banks, four branches for the same. <clears throat> for the same bank. Uh, one day the president called me, phoned me, I was very surprised, and <clears throat> he, he asked me to design the branch, and the, the only things he asked to me was to, to create a space where people wish to stay a moment, a moment longer. <clears throat> uh, in, I don't know the banks in the United States, but in Japan the banks are quite uh, strict, and when you enter in the space, you are quite nervous, and and you have to wait a lot, a lot of time, and you want to, but you want to leave as soon as possible. So he asked me uh, like this, and <clears throat> this is the first one uh, in Tokyo. Uh, 
the first, the first thing when I start a project is to decide the num approximately the number of colors I will choose, <coughs> depending on the project, on the function, etc., on the site, etc. In Japan, Jap uh, in Japanese Japanese banks have usually one colors for as corporate colors or two, and uh, <coughs> it gives very very strong uh, image. I chose for this bank to design with. 24 colors. Uh, I chose all the colors which exist. I call them color families. I use uh, six color families, the yellow family, and the pink, and brown, green, blue, and purple. Six color families in four tones, and for a total of 24 colors. <coughs> in order to give like a <coughs> soft and welcome atmosphere. <coughs> uh, <coughs> I cannot explain, sorry, each project very long, it will take so much time. So I will explain shortly each project. If you are interested, interested in more details, uh, please look for more explanation at our website. <coughs> and. All of the branches, the four branches I designed in for <coughs> this bank, I base the, the main concept on uh, feeling the nature in Tokyo. <coughs> and for this one, uh, <coughs> there are like seven courtyards planted with real planted, and I overlap like a graphic trees, so white trees, and 24 colors leaves <coughs> in the space. <coughs> the second one in the Tokyo 2, <coughs> the concept, uh, the, I named the, the project the Rainbow Millefeuille as a French pastry. It's like, like this. <coughs> For this, for the branch I show you before, I try to th that people feel the the green and the trees in the building. When I went to the site of this project for the first for the first time, it is a very very busy site in Tokyo with a big road and very noisy with a quite big building, and <clears throat> naturally um, I looked up in order to see the sky. And I decided in this project to design a building in order people naturally look up and, and become conscious of the sky. And there are uh, 11 layers from yellow above the entrance to a pink green and blue, the, la the last layers on the top, the colors is like a sky blue in order to shade with the sky. Inside the buildings too, there are three like elliptic voids in order you can uh, watch uh, the change of the sky. The ceiling is designed into For this branch, this branch was located in a, <clears throat> a commercial street, and the, the site was very, very close to the street and to the sidewalk. So I decided <clears throat> to create a space where people can uh, feel the exterior and the inter interior together. <clears throat> This building is composed of four layers. You have the first one, which is, which is like a semi-public one, an exterior one, wood deck, and an interior one, like an open space. And the third one is like a bamboo 
garden and <coughs> so exterior space and the fourth one is interior <coughs> and <coughs> I use very, very tall, uh, I don't know it in feet, sorry, <laughs> very tall, uh, I call them sticks, <coughs> paint in 24 colors. Uh, the sticks are located outside the building and inside the building and the facade is made of glass. So they reflect on the glass and the interior and exterior uh, merge together. This is a view from the interior. The most recent I designed, which opened last year, <clears throat> for this one, this branch is located at the a crossing. So a lot of people, a lot of cars, buses, and people walk, walk in front of the, this site. So I decided to create like a very rhythmical facade with a, <clears throat> like a floating small gardens in order people living in the neighborhood too can feel uh, the nature and the colors. Uh, in Japan, I, I don't know in the US, in Japan, all of the banks have a very, very big signboard with the name of the bank. Uh, <clears throat> so one of the characteristic of the branches I design is that there is no sign at all. So I design the facade in order to be like a, a signage itself. For this project, of course, it's for the same client. I use the same 24 colors. Uh, the, the facade is designed with cubes, uh, four different, with four different depths, and <coughs> colors are <coughs> in, on different sides of the cubes. So when you walk uh, in front of the building, the colors change. This one is an interior project, a cooking school, uh, very famous cooking school in Japan. I pass. <clears throat> this exhibition, it's a, it's a concept exhibition I call Kaleidoscope. Um, I had the opportunity to use a gallery for this concept during five months, which is very, very long. And I decided to change every month the color of the gallery in order people can experience in a different way and feel colors. I start with yellow and <clears throat> pink, then green, blue, and the fifth month was uh, black. This gal gallery is in a showroom of uh, Adhesive film, color, uh, colorful films you can use for, for example, for, for sign, signage or for installation. This project is quite a recent one. <clears throat> it's a nursing home in Japan. It was quite a small project. It was the lobby, the in, like the entrance of this, it, was, it is quite a big building. And for this project too, the president called me because uh, <clears throat> b before this design, this lobby was not used at all by the person, the residents or the family who came to visit the residence. So usually, People, clients, will call me. Uh, <coughs> they um, they wish that I can create some space in order people naturally enter the space or enjoy the space. 
And for this space, this was for the nursing home. Uh, the design is very simple. Of course, I change everything. <laughs> but the principal piece is, as you see on the ceiling, <clears throat> it's like, how do you say, mo mobile in, in English. I don't know. It's like an object who moves uh, alone on the ceiling. I designed for this 50 mo mobiles using like uh, a sphere like this. The concept is dancing bubbles. <coughs> so the bubbles move very slowly. <coughs> it's completely differ different. It's a furniture with the same concept of the rainbow milfi, the bank I showed you. Um, <clears throat> when I design, I'm always like in a travel between different scales. <clears throat> it's to design a building or furniture piece or an interior design, or now I'm design a train design. It's it's exactly the, the same purpose for me and the same way of work. I always try to give emotion to people in my work. And I, I designed a wallpaper magazine called me to, to, to make a collaboration with a German uh, furniture manufacturer for the Milano Salone. And I, I start designing like this, using a lot of colors and <clears throat> trying to create like layers of colors. And I realized that, that I would like to create more and more like so you feeling of layers. And I try to change the form of, the form of color. I'm always studying the form of color. And the Schkili concept evolved from like a surface to a line, because if the form of the color becomes thinner, you can overlap, you can use more colors in the same uh, space volume, and you can create more and more layers and more and more emotion. Uh, for, for example, this is an <clears throat> installation I made for uh, Uniqlo last autumn. It was a global installation, so they were in New York to San Francisco and Europe too. It was an installation for the <coughs> Merino wool for Uniqlo, which is a very, very thin wool. That's, that's why I base the concept I call them thin, 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 and I use very, very, very thin uh, th threads. <clears throat> and f uh, I wanted to use 100 colors for this project, but unfortunately, uh, such number of colors, sweet colors, didn't exist in Japan, so I use approximately 70 colors for this. It's a window, this is in Tokyo. It's a, in Soho. In Fifth Avenue. Another one, one of <coughs> a concept I I like very much. I called it sticks. It was developed in the Ecoda branch, it's a bank I showed you. Uh, but the sticks is a concept I, I'm developing for several years. The first time was for Isemiyake. It was for an installation in uh, three Isemiyake stores on the located on the same street. And I decided to um, I designed with uh, more than 400 sticks. And it's like an unbalanced balance. 
it uh, <laughs> like the time stops. Perhaps as you can realize, the white color, the white, is very, very important for me. Uh, I never use black, for example, never, but I, in all of my projects, the white is very important uh, in order the colors I use appear beautiful. This is another installation for Isemiake <clears throat> using like sticks, flowers. Basically this concept, the, the first time I present this concept was, uh, it was for this chair I presented, <clears throat> it was in 2007. Um, when I open, when I create my studio, so more than 10 years ago, I decided one thing. Of course, I decided the concept to give emotions with color, but I decided one more thing. It was to, um, to every year to participate to an exhibition in Japan or outside in order to present a new work, a new concept, not for a client, a concept I will uh, develop by myself and with the person who works in, with me in my studio. And this an example is a stick chair. <clears throat> it's the same concept of an unbalanced balance. Uh, the sticks, the legs are in wood. Uh, if they were in steel, they could be thinner, but it was the, the thinner size for wood legs. And they support a heavy acrylic uh, sitting. And the reflection effects are very beautiful. And when I saw these effects, I decided the next year to, to express more and more this. And I create, I call it the, the Shibafu table. It's a very, very small, it's a low table. <coughs> using more thin sticks in acrylic. This project, yesterday student asked me which, pro which project of mine I prefer. It's very, very difficult to answer because I really enjoy all of the projects I made. But if I had to choose one, I think I would choose this one. It's very difficult to appreciate, I think, with photo. Uh, <laughs> it's better to see the real one. This is a, like a modular product. I called it toge, which means uh, thorn in English. <clears throat> it's a very, 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 very thin. I use colors very thin. It's like a sea urchin. It's a module. You can interlock each other naturally they interlock the module, and you can create volume or spaces as you want. And it looks, a photo is difficult to understand. When you, when you see this module, it's, they seem very, very soft, like uh, dandelion puff balls, but it's very, uh, it's made with uh, piano wire, so it's very hard. And for this year, I decided to present this module as a wedding dress. A wedding dress, you wanted to touch it, but you cannot. It's like this. It's not fixed, it's only interlocked. <coughs> Another moment I presented with exactly the same pieces. I designed like a build, building mod, models. You can create any form you like. Another, it's another module, it's called EDA, which means branch, little branch in uh, English. 
These pieces too are very, very thin. It's made in carbon. It, only carbon was possible for uh, thinness like this. <coughs> and you can in, interlock uh, the pieces together. And you see, it's, it's very thin, so it's difficult perhaps to see. For this gallery, I create uh, <coughs> the ceiling like this. It's always the same module, but when we combine them, it creates a very natural and very random atmosphere. I use a white one here. This, <coughs> this piece I call Toki, which means time. time. Um, <coughs> it's an installation. I, I try to represent time <coughs> with very small uh, sticks. For this exhibition, I use around 200 of small sticks. Put, it's a very simple piece, put on the white canvas. And <clears throat> it, was, it seems very, very easy, but it was perhaps the most difficult piece we realized in my studio. Uh, we use small magnets to attach, so you cannot see anything, you cannot see uh, how the sticks are fixed. <clears throat> and they are uh, moving. We use uh, clock engine outside. <clears throat> and of course, if every stick uh, moves second by second in a, but every stick moves separately, as there are a lot of people and a lot of times. This is a, a product, it's a game. I, I don't know if in the US, in Europe, you call, we call this game Mikado. It's a very, very popular, like a stick game. You have to throw, like, usually wooden sticks on the table and you have to to take one by one without moving the other one. And for this, I designed with paper. It was the first time the, the client, uh, <clears throat> it, it was a project with other designer. Each designer has to design a game with paper. And it was the first, it was two years ago, it was the first time I designed with paper. And <clears throat> I don't like so much game, but I like Mikado. And the, the stick chair I show you was inspired first by the Mikado and this unbalanced balance. So I decided to uh, design a Mikado in paper. So a, a lot of paper, like in the Great Hall, usually I use the same paper where <coughs> Uh, pushed together, layered together, <laughs> to create strong sticks. Last year, I had a chance to be inv inv invited to the Biennale, Venice Architecture Biennale. And for this time, I, <coughs> uh, as you know, the, the main concept of the Biennale was fundamentals. So it gave the opportunity for me to think again about my concept of Shkili. And I express uh, <coughs> it by big models, six big models, <coughs> like surface and like sticks. I will show you to the, the make. <coughs> For this project, this was terrible because we use, this is the, the final six models. We use around, I don't know, 20,000 pieces. And 
of the person who works of my study. All of my studio went to Venice with four days in order to build the models day and night. In, it, it was terrible. <laughs> yes, I'm terrible. <laughs> the person, for me, I, I had to be to the opening of the last bank I designed, so I went after, but all of the team in my studio didn't sleep, I think, for four days. It was, yes, very, very hard. <clears throat> This, like Sophie's Schkili, was quite simple, but the sticks, <laughs> we prepare like, you can see drawings like this. <laughs> and there were total like, uh, yes, 20,000 pieces. <clears throat> and you have to stick one by one. <clears throat> The piece, <laughs> my team brought the piece like that in Venice. And they had to make this because it's, it's too fragile, fragile to send by boat. And 100 colors, um, the installation here in the Great Hall. This installation, I made it the first time, so two years ago in Tokyo. It was for the 10th anniversary of my studio. I participated, I was invited by the city of Tokyo to an art event. And usually every year, as I show you, for this type of exhibition, I present a new furniture of new modular product or something like that. But because it was for the 10th anniversary of my studio, I decided to create um, another thing. And I wanted people can feel colors. Uh, <clears throat> that's all. That's what I decided to to create this 100 colors. <laughs> and 100 it's a, it's a very simple number, like 100%. Everybody is familiar with 100, but it expressed too that there is a, a lot of colors. And usually people can distinguish like millions of colors, but usually I think we are not conscious at all about colors and we are living in a very, uh, limited numbers of colors as a rainbow hue, generally. That's why I decided to create an installation using uh, 100 colors and to express the layers of and the colors I always feel uh, in the city of Tokyo. And it was two years ago and this exhibition was planned, was planned for 10 days or two weeks, but a lot, a lot of people, it was located in, a, in the lobby, in a very, very, in a skyscraper in the center of Tokyo. So all the persons who worked in the skyscraper, uh, every day, they, they have to, to go, <coughs> uh, they have to, to, to pass in this space. And <coughs> the, finally, the exhibition was uh, d around one month. And <coughs> for me, it was so, yeah, so, so success for me, I don't mean success. It was, you can feel by your five senses, the colors like this. So at this time, I decided to develop this exhibition and to try to make it in other cities of the world. I use papers, as you know. It's a, it was very, very difficult to choose the 100 colors. <laughs> it was a year. I chose paper because it was a year 
two years ago when I des designed the paper Mikado. Uh, <coughs> usually I give relations to all of my projects and it was the first time I used papers for the, this product, for this game, and I found it was very interesting, so I decided to uh, choose a lot of papers. This 100 colors <laughs> travels in the world in a different way, in a different concept. It was for Uniqlo. I called it the colorful wind. Uh, <clears throat> I use the same colors, the same 100 colors, but not like a big sheet of paper, like a strands of color. And you, you cannot see in this uh, photo, but there were fan uh, <coughs> inserted in the floor, so the paper moved like a colorful wind. And the last one, I wanted to show, it's a last year. For the same art event, uh, <coughs> I decided to realize a 100 colors exhibition installation in a different way outside. So it was a, a challenge for me because of course, because if outside, it's not possible to use paper. So for this installation, we used uh, fabrics, but because there are 100 colors I like uh, didn't exist with e existing fabric. So we have to, to dye in my studio. It was very, very difficult to blend. Of course, we are not professional at all of tying colors, but we, we try, we try, and we made by ourselves the colors. For this, it's better to see. Uh, <clears throat> wow, the sound is big, sorry. <clears throat> so the colors were, it was outside, so it was very interesting because the colors move naturally, was don't move sometimes and move a lot sometimes. It was located in a very famous park, uh, Shinjuku Central Park in Tokyo. Yes, <clears throat> um, I show you some uh, few projects, uh, selected projects. Um, <clears throat> I would like to, to say to you important things for me. Is for me, as I said at the beginning, I wasn't conscious with colors at all when I was living in France. And by visiting Tokyo gave me the opportunity to feel colors and to meet with colors. So I hope these installations give you the opportunity to realize that colors are beautiful and that colors uh, can create a lot of emotions. I would be very happy if it happens for, for you. <clears throat> Perhaps you have already seen, but there is a panel with 100 round circles, 100 colors, the same colors as in the installation. There is a panel located underneath the installation and if you have time, please uh, mark with the small stickers your favorite color of the day. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening.
space that's not working. Yes. Um, and so, uh, and they see the value, obviously, of the work that you do and what color does to help the space work. Um, and so I wanted to see if you might comment on why you think uh, so many architects don't use color. Oh. <laughs> I, I I don't I don't know in I don't know I think a lot of architects as me when I was in France do not realize I, I think the the principal reason is that people are not so much conscious of colors but I don't know for architects in Japan they always tell me that it's too dangerous to use colors, and uh, <clears throat> they are always surprised by my work because uh, I, I haven't told this point, but it's very important. I, in all of my projects, I use not one colors, but several colors. It's uh, necessary for me. <clears throat> uh, I, I don't know, perhaps because architects are not conscious or people, I, I I don't know. What what do you think about? Are you architect? Oh, are you using colors? I try to. Are you trying to? <laughs> yes, um, I'm teaching at university too. Uh, <coughs> I've been teaching for seven uh, seven or eight years, and first I <coughs> I was asked to teach to in this university to teach space design, but. I, I don't teach so much space design. I teach only colors. And uh, I perhaps, if internet, I can. And uh, <clears throat> think is an important thing. Uh, I don't know in other country, but it's the same. It's a one col it's a one hundred colors laboratory in Japan. So I think the important. One important thing is um, to not be afraid by colors. It's to become familiar with colors. That's why I created uh, this 100 Colors Lab before the 100 installations. That's why I chose the 100 st installations. This one was first. Um, <clears throat> the first thing I asked to, to my student, in, in the step one, I ask. Uh, every week. For example, this week will be Yellow Family. So they have to, during one week, they have to be conscious of every uh, yellow or orange around them, and they have to collect everything. It, it can be a flower, like a magazine. They have to collect orange. And the following week will be the Pink Family, etc., etc. First, I tried my students become familiar and take conscious with color. And in the second, uh, <coughs> second steps, I ask them to create their own 100 colors. <laughs> the only thing which is decided is they have to create 100 colors in order they, uh, <coughs> um, I would say, in order, they, they have to create all the color family which exists. And the important thing is the students enjoy the process. If not, it's, it's uh, terrible to have to create 100 piece. So they are free to create as they want. So you have example, you have like model, chair model, or like chocolate bars, or like a form. A lot of things, everything is okay, but the important thing is to have the, their create their own palette. So, I don't know in the US, but in Japan, yes, I think a lot of persons are quite afraid and think that using a lot of colors is very risky. Is there another, thing, another question? Yes? Is it all done with paint? How, how do you get 
Yes, it's an important point because designing with colors is is very dif difficult in um, very difficult because it's difficult to yes to choose colors and it's difficult to uh, communicate colors to other people for example people who, who will create and who, who will manufacture the design and it's difficult to uh, yes to realize colors themselves so um <clears throat> I will talk about the, the, the three steps because I think it's important um, for cho choosing the colors. It's quite difficult to because, as you know, I, I I don't know. I'm sorry, I don't know the United States situation. But uh, in Japan, for example, or in Europe, there are quite few color charts, and uh, I think the. So the best one I can use it's a Pantone one, but the Pantone one is this has been decided for graphic designer, not for architects. So uh, when I have absolutely to decide, depending on projects, like uh, with uh, an, an, like a, I would say like an official color chart, uh, I always choose with Pantone. But when I choose a color with, a, for example, a Pantone color, uh, any con contractor in Japan, every, uh, nobody will be happy because they, they cannot work. For example, if I give them a number or like a, a small piece, a Pantone is very small, I give them a small piece of paper, they always refused to me. They say they cannot produce paint like this. So it's always, always difficult for this. Um, <clears throat> about the material, of course, it depends if it's an architecture building or uh, furniture or installation. Uh, <clears throat> when I work on architecture building, um, <clears throat> the, for example, the banks I, sh I show you, I use uh, aluminum panel. The most important things for me is, is to create the colors I have in my head uh, perfectly. And of course, painting is the best. <laughs> but uh, so for these banks, I choose aluminum, white aluminum panels, and they are uh, like painted. But it's not easy at all. For example, like a project like banks like this, uh, the general contractor for each branch of it's a different contractor each time, they of course, they had to produce painting samples in order I check. But usually, I, I refuse around five or six times one sample set. It's very, very difficult. And sometimes they have to change the painting factory because in this factory they are not able to produce. So it's quite, quite hard. I have always to... In, when I, I'm scheduling, uh, I'm preparing a timetable for a project, I have always to secure lo <laughs> a long time for the sample check. Of course, for project more not architecture, like installation or furniture, I'm, for this project, I'm always free. I can choose uh, which material I want. But of course, I always choose material um, <clears throat> where the colors will be more beautiful. <laughs> so for me, for the 100 colors, to, to speak frankly, I wanted first to have my own 100 colors. I wanted the, it's a Japanese paper manufacturer who produce the, the paper, but it's existing paper. Uh, it was not possible to, to produce 100 colors specially for me. It's always a problem in all my projects. I contact, for example, I work a lot with acrylic too. Uh, I have contacted a, lo a lot of uh, person I know, for example, the director of acrylic maker, etc., etc. Always at the beginning, they are very happy when I show the project and I explain I would like to, to have like this, like. For example, 100 color, <clears throat> and in Japan there are very, very few 
colors, existing colors for each material. So at the beginning, they are very happy. And usually, I meet the, the general boss. And always, he promised me, promised me, OK, OK, we will produce you. And generally, three weeks after, they contact me. And they, when the boss talks to the factory and they made a lot of meetings, they realize that it was too, too hard to take too time and too much money to realize a project. So it's, it's always very, very hard. That's why for the paper it's existing. But it was quite difficult to choose because, as I said, I mixed. If you look well, um, you can see that the paper, I mix different sorts of paper. There are not the same kind of papers because there were not enough colors in one sort. So I mixed. Yes? Uh, yes, uh, for all, I, I don't like a particular col color one, um, <clears throat> but as you can see in my project, I always use like uh, quite uh, like vivid colors, like brilliant colors. Uh, <clears throat> and I always use, uh, of course, colors I like. I, I don't I I choose the colors in a how do I say in a emotionally way. There is no special concept by using, for example, these colors for any uh, purpose, etc., etc. I always uh, choose colors first, as I say, the number of colors according to the project uh, with my feeling and. Uh, <clears throat> An important thing is for me is to use not one or two colors, but to use several colors. This point is inspired too by the city of Tokyo. When I see uh, in Tokyo a lot of layers, um, there were, of course, a lot of colors. And it gave a lot of depth. And I like this feeling and a lot of rhythm. <clears throat> That's why I try to mix uh, I don't know, perhaps from, in all the projects I designed, um, from seven colors to 100 now. OK, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.